solving equations using inverse operations. When I'm solving an equation, I need to isolate the variable using inverse or opposite operations. And I perform these inverse operations in the reverse order of operations. What this typically means is that I add or subtract and then I multiply or divide. And that's exactly the order that I will perform my inverse operations for this first example. 2x minus 4 equals 6. My goal is to isolate x, and the first thing that I will do is the inverse of subtracting 4, or the opposite. So in order to undo subtracting 4, I will add 4 to both sides of my equation. Adding 4 to both sides means my equality statement is maintained. So 2x minus 4 plus 4, the minus 4 and the plus 4 add to 0. And then what I'm left with is 2x equals 6 plus 4, which is 10. Please be aware you are absolutely required to show this work. You cannot do this in your head, and you cannot just magically move the plus 4 over. I need to see plus 4 plus 4 and 2x equals 10. My second inverse operation will be to undo multiplication by 2. That means I will divide both sides of my equation by 2. And I can either show that by dividing by 2 with that division bar or an actual division symbol. Either is fine. So x times 2 divided by 2 leaves me with x. And now I have my solution 10 divided by 2 equals 5. Again, please notice this is the work that is required. And this is the only way you're allowed to show your work for solving an equation. Now, if you notice, this first equation is kind of similar to the second example. So I'm multiplying by two and I'm subtracting four. So my inverse operations plus four divided by two. But similar here, I should be adding four and then dividing by two, but I have a different equation and I'm gonna have a different solution. So in order to understand how these two equations are different, I'm gonna go ahead and trace through my order of operations for this first example to understand why I first added and then divided by two. So when I trace through what's happening to x in this equation, the first thing that's happening to x is I'm multiplying by two. So using regular order of operations, I have x times two, and then I'm subtracting four from two x. So when I have x, I multiply it by two and subtract four, what I'm left with is six. Now in order to find my solution, I need to perform inverse operations. So the inverse of subtracting four, the inverse of multiplying by two in reverse order. So first I will perform the inverse of minus four and then the inverse of times two. And that will give me my solution. So I start with six and the first thing, that, thing I need to do is the opposite of subtracting four, which is adding four. Six plus four gives me 10. Next I do the inverse of multiplying by two, which is dividing by two. So 10 divided by two gives me my solution, which is five. This little flow chart is a visual for helping me understand my order of operations so I can decide my reverse order of operations, but this work is not ever required. It just may be helpful for you. It's particularly helpful to understand how this equation is different than this equation. Two parentheses x minus four equals six. So let's see how the order of operations here is different. The order of, of operations here is different because of the parentheses. Since there are parentheses, the first thing that I do is I subtract 4 from x. So I have a little bit more simplified of a flowchart here. So I have x, and the first thing I do to x is I subtract 4. I know this again because of the parentheses. The second thing I do is I multiply x minus 4 by 2. This means when I'm solving, I need to perform the inverse of multiplying by 2 and then the inverse of subtracting 4. That means my first inverse operation will be dividing by 2 and my second inverse will be adding four. So let's go ahead and solve this equation using that understanding. First dividing by four, dividing by two, and then adding four, okay? So again, I can show that division bar or the division symbol. My first inverse operation is dividing by two because I'm going in reverse order of operations. In the original equation, minus four times two, so in reverse, divided by two and then plus four. So I have x minus four equals six divided by two, which is three. And then my final inverse operation is adding four, adding four. That gives me my solution, x equals seven. 
There is a second strategy for solving this equation. I could have used the distributive property and then used inverse operations, and that is completely correct. We're just using a different strategy here, and you will be asked to practice the second strategy. Again, to recap, we solved this first equation by adding four and then dividing by two because that was the correct reverse order of operations for this equation. For the second example, because of the parentheses, my original order of operations was minus four times two. So when I was solving, I did so in reverse order of operations, dividing by two first and then adding four. 